Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Tech Tested. It's about time I made another video, so let's get into it, comparing the HD 4870 to the GTX 260. Before we get started though, make sure to go check out our website at techtested.io and pick yourself up some of our merch, just like our Just Add Voltage mug, to help get yourself your best overclocks out of your graphics cards and CPU. Okay, it doesn't actually help you overclocks, but it looks really cool and we'd appreciate your support. The war between AMD and Nvidia has been raging on for decades now, and it was just as true back in 2008 as it is today. In the summer of 2008, Nvidia launched the GTX 280 and the GTX 260. On paper, the two cards looked like they'd have vast performance differences. However, the GTX 260 performed much closer to its big brother than the specs would suggest. This made it a great value for the mid-range market coming in at $400. Later that month though, AMD would strike back. They released the HD 4870 and it was the first graphics card to feature GDDR5 memory. It competed directly with the GTX 260 trading blows with it in titles. Seriously, like 50% of the wins went to the GTX 260 and 50% to the 4870. The big difference here was the HD 4870 launched at a price of $300, making it a much better value than the GTX 260. The original HD 4870 launched with 512 megabytes of GDDR5. The GTX 260 was sporting 892 megabytes of GDDR3 memory. This wasn't the end of the battle for these two cards though. Later, AMD would release a one gigabyte variant of the HD 4870, and Nvidia would launch the core 216 version of their GTX 260. There also was a 1.5 gigabytes variant of the GTX 260, but it's very rare and I've never seen one for sale. That was 13 years ago though. It's 2021 now, and we need to see how these cards hold up today. Now, that creates a couple problems for us. Both of these cards are limited to DirectX 10.1 and won't be able to play any games run on DirectX 11 or higher API. Furthermore, neither of these cards are receiving driver updates. The GTX 260 does have Windows 10 drivers, but the HD 4870 is limited to Windows 8.1. As we saw in a previous video, you can run the HD 4870 on Windows 10 with the 8.1 drivers, but it's not the best experience. So for our test today, I ran both of these cards in Windows 7. The platform we ran on was an X58 motherboard with an i7-950 overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz. We paired that with 24 gigabytes of RAM running in triple channel. Now, I know you're probably thinking this platform is too old to be testing these cards, but I promise you we didn't run into any CPU bottlenecks here. We cranked up the graphics on these tests so we could get a GPU bottleneck. Now, seeing as how we are limited to DirectX 10.1, we weren't able to run modern games, so we ran older titles that would be more error appropriate for these tests. We also overclocked each graphics card to see how they would perform with a little bit more oomph. And without further ado, let's get into the benchmarks. As you can see, these cards still trade blows even today, each of them winning half of our benchmarks. 
Most of our results are pretty self-explanatory. However, I want to mention Skyrim in particular because with the GTX 260, we ran into a VRAM bottleneck. Keep in mind, we were running at 1080p and we were at max details, which means lowering your details or your resolution would probably solve this problem with the GTX 260. I also want to note we were running the one gigabyte version of the HD 4870 and the regular GTX 260. If you're running a 512 megabyte version of the HD 4870, you would likely hit the same VRAM bottlenecks we did in Skyrim. So here's the big question, which of the two would I recommend? Honestly, I would say neither. Even though you can pick these up relatively cheaply on places like eBay, it's very difficult to recommend a card that won't run modern games. However, if I had to choose, I would pick the GTX 260. I know the VRAM is a limitation, but adjusting your settings can help that quite a bit, and Nvidia drivers do seem to hold up a lot better over time. With that said, the only way I could recommend either of these cards is if you're building a retro PC. I actually think either of these cards are a really good option if you're building a more era appropriate system. I know the GPU market right now is kind of crazy and it doesn't have any signs of letting up, but that doesn't mean you should spend money on a really cheap graphics card that isn't gonna satisfy your gaming needs. Still, it's fun to take a trip down memory lane and see how old hardware holds up today. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Check out our Discord and our website so you can pick yourself up some tech tested merch. Also, got some pretty cool people on our Discord. You should check it out.